what you're seeing right now was created with an iPhone 7. That's right, not a DSLR, not an iPhone 10, no additional lenses, just a basic iPhone. My name's Dean from the Songwriting Studio, and if you've ever written an original song, then my guess is you've dreamed of making a music video for that song. But then reality quickly set in, right? How in the world am I supposed to afford a professional cinematographer to come and shoot my music video? Well, there is good news for you, because with the rise of technology, you now have a really powerful camera on your phone. And that means you can make epic looking music videos with your cell phone. exciting right and that's why I've teamed up with my good friend and photographer Blake Schultz what's up guys and together we've made a course teaching you how to create and shoot really awesome music videos using your phone first part of this course, you're going to learn how to prepare for your music video and set yourself up for a great music video before you ever take a shot. Then you'll learn tons of creative ways to capture unique and cinematic shots, including creative angles, motion shots, slow-mo videos, and more. You'll even get some behind the scenes footage of us going on location and taking some awesome shots. So if you've ever dreamed of having epic music videos for your original music, this course is for you. Rolling video one. Wow, rolling video one makes me nervous. All right, guys, so in this section of the course, we are going to talk about what you need to do before you pick up your phone and go out and start filming. Because to make a great music video, you don't just grab your phone and run out of the door and start filming a bunch of random shots. You need to back it up a little bit and take some time to prepare well for your music video. So let's dive into this section and talk about practical ways that you can prepare and set yourself up to make a great music video. Feeling good. It's yeah, feeling good. Woo. All right. Video number two. The first thing you need to do to prepare for a great music video is create a storyboard. What is a storyboard? Well, very simply, a storyboard is where you write out or even draw out a rough sketch of what you want your video to be about and what you want it to look like. Now, this storyboard can be very simple or it can be extremely detailed. It's really up to you. But the point is, you really need to make a storyboard for your music video. When you're taking the time to storyboard, here's a few key questions you can ask yourself to help generate those ideas and help really map out where you want to go with your music video. Really, the big question that you're asking is how can I best express my song in a visual format? Because the point of a music video isn't just to make it look cool or get a bunch of cool shots. The point of a music video is to actually further express the meaning of your song through a visual medium. So here's a few ways to think about it. Read your lyrics aloud and ask yourself, how would I express these lyrics visually if I couldn't use any words? All right, next, listen to the sound of your song and ask yourself the question, if I had to express this sound using a visual medium and no audio, how would I express it? You're trying to figure out what kind of images would appropriately convey the message of your song. Is there things in nature that match it? Is there things within my city or within my house that match it? It could be a certain expression on a person's face, or maybe it's even the time of day. Do these things match up with the sound of my song? Is this starting to make sense? Asking questions like this can help give you creative ideas for your storyboard 
and it can also help you from making the mistake of creating a really cool looking music video that actually has nothing to do with the meaning of your song. All right, the next question to ask yourself is, is there a way I can express these visuals in a unique or creative way? This is where you give yourself the freedom to think outside of the box a little bit. Maybe you share your plot from a unique angle or there's an unexpected twist or humor or something else that really grabs your attention. Creative elements like this can help someone engage more with your music video, which ups the chance that they'll stay watching your video and that your video and your song could actually make an impact on them. Now, we've created a PDF document with all of these questions, so here's what I want you to do actually download it, actually ask yourself those questions, and take time to write them down and create your storyboard. What is a storyboard? Well, very simply, it's a, hmm, what is it? Stay in your flow. Stay in the flow. Stay in the flow. All right, so you've got your storyboard. It's time to move on to step two. Now, I know you want to run out there and start taking a bunch of cool shots, but you asked us to teach you how to make professional looking music videos with your phone, right? Well, to do that, you really have to prepare well. So don't skip out on this section. And honestly, I actually like this part of the process. This is where I get excited and where my creative juices really start flowing. So let's jump into step number two, and that is creating a shot list. A shot list is very simply a list of all the shots that you need to take. And specifically, these shots are going to bring to life what's in your storyboard. Now, the storyboard and the timeline go hand in hand, and they could be one document, but I like to split them up and have a separate document that is just dedicated to my shot list. And on this shot list document, we aim to detail every shot that we're gonna take. The shot list is where you and maybe a creative friend think about what angles or vantage points or movements will best capture what you have in your storyboard. Now, you may not be able to predict every single shot that you're gonna take, but it's still worth taking the time to make a shot list. A shot list will save you time because you're not just meandering around aimlessly taking a bunch of random videos. The shot list will also help eliminate the headache of going and filming all day and then coming back and going, we forgot to get this one shot that we had to have. That is a bummer. Totally That's probably gonna to happen to us today. today. <laughs> that could be our story. <laughs> Lastly, if you're working with someone else on this project, the shot list can help ensure that you are both on the same page. It lets you know that you're visualizing the same things and that on filming day, you're going for the exact same thing. So do yourself a favor and take it from me, write out a detailed shot list. You'll thank yourself for it later. Now the, 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 oh man, I was really, I was flowing on going. You're doing good. We're flowing. We're flowing. You've got your storyboard together. You've even got your shot list together. You're so awesome. Now the third thing you need to do in preparing for your music video is to test your shots. Testing your shots will help you answer a really important question, and that is, does this shot actually look like I thought it would in my head? Because there's definitely times when you go out and film a shot and when you watch it on camera, you go, that didn't look quite like I thought it was going to. And honestly, it just looks pretty lame. Testing your shots is also a great time to experiment with different angles or vantage points and really find the very best one for your video. And sometimes, if you're doing a very technical shot, the shot test can help answer the question, is this shot even possible? Can we even pull it off? For instance, if your subject is gonna be riding a bike and you wanna film that subject using a gimbal in the back of a car, the shot test can tell you if it's possible. Woo! You ready? Yep. Uh, sure, I keep the hazards on. Right, Great. Go, go. Yeah, get to the middle. All right, it's gone. All right. So in conclusion, 
Your shots don't have to look perfect. You don't have to spend tons of time on your test shots, but it's definitely worth taking some time to go through those test shots and make sure that you're capturing what you want to see at the end of the day. Best out to do, Hickey. Check it, check, check. One, two, three. So here's a quick but very useful tip when it comes to preparing for your music video. The tip is, all right, it's crazy, man. It's got crazy hair. Get inspiration from other great music videos. It's really simple. Just take the time to watch a few other music videos that you think are really awesome. And while you're doing that, take some notes, draw in some inspiration from what you're seeing. And it's really helpful if you can find a few music videos that really match the vibe that you're trying to go for in your music video. It's not that you're trying to copy something else that's already out there, but watching other great music videos can help give you creative ideas that you wouldn't have otherwise come up with just on your own. So go watch some awesome music videos and take some notes. That's all for today, class. So here's a quip, quip. <laughs> what in the world? First line. First line, jacked it up. Let's move on. You are a pro. You've got your storyboard. You've got your shot list. You even took the time to test those shots. Before you go out and nail this thing, here's one last suggestion. Phone a friend. That's right, if possible, Find yourself a friend who can help you tackle this project. Bro, are you filming me? Yeah, I'm filming you. Look I'm filming this. you. Oh, it's a double film action. Oh, we got that sun glare back in. Oh, work it, work it, work it. Oh, yes. That was magical, bro. It is extremely helpful to have someone else working on this project with you. And it's even better when that friend is creative or specifically visual. This person can help give creative input in the preparation phase when you're storyboarding or creating your shot list. And then more importantly, they can help you film when it comes time to test your shots or to film the music video. Because it's pretty hard to be the guy on camera and the guy behind the camera at the same time. Right, Blake? Right. So this person could be a fellow band member, a friend, or a family member, and maybe they volunteer their time just because it's fun. Or maybe you supply some delicious foods for their generous efforts. And we're back. We're back, back at, at the, the, greatest, the greatest place on earth. Or maybe you even pay this person for their time and skill. However you work it out, I would highly recommend that you find a partner, an accomplice, to help you make this music video. Not only will your music video look better, but honestly, I think you'll have a lot more fun making this video with a friend. In this section of the course, we are gonna talk about how to capture high quality, unique, and cinematic looking shots for your music video. This is so fun. As we get into the juicy stuff on how to get killer shots, I want you to keep a concept in mind here. Skill is more important than gear. Creativity is more important than gear. I say this first of all, because I want you to spend your time and effort going after the stuff that really matters, and that's honing in your skills. That's using a creative lens to look at things. And I'm also telling you this because we are gonna look at a few pieces of equipment that can enhance your filmmaking process. But I don't want you to get fixated on these pieces of gear thinking that if I get this piece of equipment, then I will make amazing music videos. Value your skill and creativity above the gear, and then when you get the gear, it will serve its true purpose and that is to be a further extension of the creativity and skill that's inside of you. And with that, my friends, let's jump into this section of the course where we're gonna talk about how to capture amazing, awesome, cool looking footage for your music video. In this video, we are gonna talk about 20 ideas for creative, unique, awesome shots. We're gonna look at how to think outside of the box to get some sweet looking footage. I'm really excited about this video, so let's quit talking about it and jump right into this thing. 
The first group of creative shots have to do with focusing on different parts of the musician, like their hands. And of course, if they're playing guitar, the guitarist's hands. Their feet. That's not something you see every day. Third, focus on their face. This first concept says, instead of having the performer in full view at all times, film them in sections. Think of an upper section, a midsection, and a lower section. The next group of shots have to do with unique angles. Normally we look at things straight on, but when you approach a shot from a unique angle, it can have a killer effect, like from the side. You can shoot from behind the subject. It's a really unique angle that you don't see very often and it gives you a lens for what the performer is seeing or from below the performer looking up. Or the opposite, from above the performer looking down but you might need a step ladder for this. Warning, make sure that your flip-flops are out of the shot before filming. Thank you. And speaking of creative angles, try shooting at an angle. The third group of shots have to do with filming actions that you're not used to seeing, like walking into the room, turning on a light, picking up your guitar, Clips like this help capture what happens before the music, like talking to your cameraman, putting on headphones, plugging in your guitar, and adjusting the microphone. All of these scenes can create a really cool buildup that leads your viewer into the song. The fourth group of shots are capturing scenes that are not necessarily musical, but they help tell the story of your song, like striking a cheesy pose, walking around, Capturing some of the cool architecture around, which helps set the scene. Riding a bike and doing a half-decent wheelie. And capitalize on unexpected things, like a fire truck going by. The moral of the story is, capture elements that you don't commonly see. You're bringing things into view that aren't normally the center of attention, and it has this really cool effect, and it's a powerful way to paint the picture of your song. Hey, Levi, can you shut that door for me, bud? Thank you. This video is about motion, movement. The next creative technique we're gonna talk about deserves a video all its own. That technique is motion. Oh yes, beautiful motion, my friends. You see, motion screams cinematic. Motion screams professional. Motion screams there's no way that shot was made on a phone. So in this video, 15 creative ideas for motion shots. Motion shot number one is panning across your subject. Shot number two, have the camera move towards the subject. Third, do the opposite. Have your camera move away from the subject. Number four, and this is so cool, have the camera circle around your subject. Warning, this technique could cause labored breathing and sweating. <laughs> Five, have your subject move across the camera. Six, have your subject move towards the camera. Number seven, of course, have your subject move away from the camera. Number eight, follow a moving subject from the front. If you're doing something that's high speed, you might need a vehicle of some sort to help you accomplish this shot. But please, don't try and be the one to drive the car and take the shot. It's seriously a bad idea. Get an awesome friend like Jeremy to drive the car for you. Jeremy! I got AC done? up here. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah. Follow your moving subject from the side. And then, of course, follow your moving subject from behind. Number 11 is something unique. Follow your moving subject, but only capture the lower half of their body. Not that fast. 
12, have your camera and your subject converge on the same point. Pan from the bottom to the top of your subject. And of course, from the top to the bottom of your subject. 14, pan from your subject up into the sky. Fifteen, pan from your subject down to the ground. Really, the possibilities are endless, but know that motion is a really powerful tool for making your music videos look more cinematic and alive and cool. The video is already done, and I'm just going on. Wow, that felt cheesy. Now, we all know how cool motion shots are. Right, class? Well, there are actually a couple of tools you'll need to capture smooth motion shots. Because if you just hold your phone with your hands and try to do a motion shot, you're gonna get some shakes and it'll just look a little lame. To avoid camera shake, there are a few tools that you can use. Some are relatively cheap and others will cost you a decent bit of cash money. So let's talk about them. Number one is a stabilizer for your phone. Now, you can get a stabilizer for your phone for about $10, and it helps eliminate some of those wobbles and shakes that you'd normally get if you were filming by hand. This can be helpful if you wanna get shots from unique angles, or especially if you're trying to film yourself. The next option is a bit more expensive, but it does a fantastic job of capturing really smooth motion shots. That is a gimbal. Bro, are you filming me? Yeah, I'm filming you. Look I'm filming this. you. A gimbal allows the cameraman to move all around while keeping the camera steady, which can have a really cool effect. But gimbals are not as cheap, and they'll run you anywhere from $90 to $300. The gimbal that we've been using recently will cost you about $150, but that may be worth it to you to have this tool in your tool belt, especially if you're making a music video where your subject and your cameraman are doing a lot of moving. But then I look to God in heaven yeah. And I remember what street this found Whichever route you go, the gear is still not gonna make the shot happen for you. So there's a few techniques you need to keep in mind when you're capturing motion shots. Technique number one, walk very carefully, as if you were sneaking through a den of hibernating bears. Rah! Don't wake me up! Walking softly or tiptoeing can help eliminate some of the shakes that would still make it into your footage even if you're using a gimbal. I feel it's still bouncy. Tip number two would be to get creative and find an object you can use to help aid your motion, like a rolling chair, a skateboard, or a bike, or even a car. Woo! Now, obviously, be careful about what you do, and some of these will even require another person to drive you or push you. A third tip is a lot of movie editing softwares, like iMovie, for instance, have a stabilize feature, which will help automatically stabilize some of your shots, but do take note that it usually trims off some of your edges and zooms in just a bit to create a stabilized look. So there you have it, guys, how to get beautifully smooth and cinematic motion shots. So here's a comparison of the same shot, one with... <clears throat> so here's a comparison of... So here's a comparison... So here's a comparison of the same shot. So here's a comparison of the same motion shot. One with. So here's a comparison of the same shot. <laughs> Buttery toast. All right. Another creative element you can use in your music videos is slow motion. Slow motion clips can bring a very unique and creative feel to your music video. And they can also serve as a great way to change up the pace of your music video. Now, you probably don't want to film your whole music video in slow motion, but splicing in a few slow motion clips can have a really awesome effect. 
And filming in slow-mo is pretty easy these days because most phones come with a built-in slow motion function. And slow motion can be a very powerful storytelling tool because it brings into view details that we don't normally get to see. And it just looks epic. Yeah. Let me see it. <laughs> Most phones have a built-in slow motion have how would you say that? Most phones have a built-in slow motion capability. <laughs> Most phones come with a built-in slow motion come with built-in capability. Most phones come with a built-in slow motion function. Hey kids, when you're trying to make a really cool music video with your cell phone, your background and your scenery are really important. So live in California or <laughs> the Pacific Northwest. We love you, moment! But if you're like me, you don't live in the Pacific Northwest. And so your options are a little bit limited when it comes to scenery. Get it, Blake! Get that shot! Well, we're gonna talk about how to get some awesome, unique shots in everyday locations. Now, before we talk about how, I want you to keep in mind one really important filmmaking fact. And that is, your audience only sees what makes it into your shot. They don't see what's outside of your shot. And why is this important? Well, sometimes when you're out searching for different shots, you may look and go, this part's really cool, but over here is kind of undesirable. Well, it doesn't really matter if that doesn't make it into the shot. So what you need to keep in mind is they are only going to see what makes it into the shot. All right, so now that you have that fresh in the old brain, let's talk about how to fish for some good old shot spots. Number one, let's start with your place. That's easy enough, you're already there. Walk through your house or your apartment with your phone out and start looking for some of the best spots and use your phone to see what the shot might look like. Next, add some tasteful props. Don't make it busy, but don't leave it boring. This might include getting rid of some of the things that are already there to clean up the shot a bit. Next, if your scene is backed right up against a wall, you might consider pulling it out a little bit to give a bit of depth behind your subject. After that, consider your lighting. Make use of natural light by windows and use other light sources like lamps to light your scene and your subject. You want to aim for something that leaves your subject evenly lit in a warm and inviting way and yet you don't want to overexpose your subject and let in too much harsh light. Next, grab your subject and test your shots. It looks cool, except I don't like the door being there, so that's why I kind of want to scoot it more this way. You might find in testing that there's a few adjustments that you need to make. And once you've done that, you should be ready to film. So start taking some shots and see what you can come up with. Now in this video, let's talk about finding awesome shots in your city, or in our case, your town. Number one, do some thinking. Think of spots in your area that would match the mood of your song. Number two, do some driving. Go drive around your city or your town and see what you can find. You might make some really cool discoveries and find some spots that you didn't even know were there. That's awesome! Number 
Number three, do some walking. Take your camera with you. Test out what some of these shots look like up close and personal. Then, as usual, do a bunch of filming and see what you can come up with. You might be surprised by how certain locations that you drive by every day actually look really epic on camera. Well, let's get a cinematic shot of the trash. Oh, yeah. Oh! Yeah. Radical. In this video, let's talk about lighting. Now, lighting is really important because it can make or break a shot, not to scare you. So, let's talk about a few pointers for getting great lighting for your shots. First, we'll start with shooting indoors. And number one, be sure to take advantage of natural light that floods in through windows. Natural light almost always looks better on camera than man-made light. But if a window is letting in too much light, then try softening it up by using a curtain or a sheet. Next, consider using ambient lights like lamps. We love lamps. Lamps not only give great soft ambient light, but they also become a great prop. Combining lamps with natural light help you accomplish a very important lighting technique, and that is to have multiple sources of light. You typically don't want to try and use one big bright light to light up your whole scene. You want to have multiple lights shining on the scene from multiple angles because it creates depth and intrigue and warmth. Next, let's talk about shooting outdoors. Number one, you need to consider the time of day in which you're shooting. You would think that shooting in the middle of the day in the brightest light would be a good time to shoot, right? Well, generally it's not because like we've mentioned before, you don't want too much harsh direct light. So if you are shooting in the middle of the day, consider finding some shade from trees or a building. Aww. Next in shooting outdoors, let's talk about one of our favorite times to shoot, and that is called the golden hour. The golden hour is the hour around dusk or dawn that just lights up the sky in a beautiful, colorful way. If we're doing lots of shots outside, we almost always wait for the golden hour. We're just yep. kind of, we're kind of losing the glorious golden hour light, so we've got to go quick or we're going to run out of time. It gives you warmth and color and dynamics in your lighting that you just simply can't get at a different time of the day. And some of our very favorite shots have been taken during the golden hour. Here's a fun little experiment you can do while filming during the golden hour, and that is to play with light rays in your shots. You can do this by aiming your camera in the general direction of the sun and typically putting your subject in between the camera and the sun. It just has a really cool effect. So again, lighting is really important, but don't let it overwhelm you. And don't think that you have to spend tons of money for a great light setup. If you can learn some of these foundational light concepts, then you'll be able to capture a well-lit scene nearly anywhere you shoot. All right, Blake, just look off into the sunset long enough. Long enough. All right, so this is the post-production process. <clears throat> Do I need an intro to this? So in this section of the chorus, we're gonna talk about the post-production process. Basically, this is everything that you're gonna do after you're done filming. 
We're gonna start out this section of the course by talking about how to maximize the quality of your phone settings. I forgot what I was supposed to say. How to maximize the video quality on your phone. Tip number one, shoot in 4K. This is the highest resolution that your phone can capture. So here's how to do it. So in the settings on your phone, you'll scroll down to go into your camera settings. Then under record video, you can click into that and you can actually change your resolution to be 4K. So you can change to 4K at 24 or 4K at 30. You'll see different options depending on the model of your phone. Shooting at 4K is the highest quality you can get on your phone. This is actually pretty amazing that they have the capability and technology to put this into our phones. So I encourage you to use it. But remember, 4K will take up a lot more space. So make sure you have the room cleared out on your phone. Tip number two, use grid lines. To turn on the grid lines, you'll simply go into your phone's general settings, click on camera, and then right here, you'll see you have the option to turn on the grid. Doing this again will pull up grid lines when you go to shoot footage on your phone. Now note, these grid lines won't make it into your footage. You just see them while you're filming to help you keep things balanced. Hello? Yes? Uh, no, I didn't. We're filming. Oh. All right, bye. The text says, <laughs> any chance you'd be up for changing? I think he pooped his pants. Let's talk about how to get that footage that you've been working so hard to capture on your phone and import it onto your computer. So I'm here in my videos and I want to send one over to the computer. I can hit select, tap on the video I'd like, or I could select multiple at once, but I'm just going to do one for now. Hit the arrow button to share, select airdrop and Dean's Mac, then it's going to wait. You could be waiting for a little while. It's okay. Just get a good book. So it popped up here on the desktop. I'm going to hit accept and save it to my downloads. So now it's going to be in my downloads folder. So say I was building my project in iMovie, I could just come down to my downloads where my video was saved and drag it into the project. So another option to use is image capture. Image capture looks like this. If it's not already on your dock, you can come up to the finder and type in image capture. So here under my devices, I selected Dean Davis's iPhone. I have all these options to choose from. I could select multiple at once if I'd like. Then I can also select where I want them to import to. Then when I've made those things, I can hit import and they'll start loading. And then once it's imported, you just drag it into your project like I showed you before. So there you have it guys. That's how you import footage from your phone to your computer. When you're trimming your clips, here's the big thing we want you to keep in mind. Generally, you should be changing shots every three to five or six seconds. You don't wanna hang on one shot forever because it can just get a bit boring and you'll lose your viewer's attention. We hope we're not losing yours. Changing your shot every few seconds or bringing in a new angle or a new scene can really help the flow of your music video. And here's one creative idea before we close out this video. You can actually change your shots in line with a beat and the tempo of your song. It creates a really cool connection between the audio and visual elements. So that's it for trimming. It's pretty simple. Just make sure to keep things moving. You may have been wondering, how do people get those cinematic black bars onto their footage? Here's how to do it. So if you're working in iMovie, there's actually not a built-in way to do it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it by going to the internet and downloading a simple tool. So you're gonna to go to nofilmschool.com. You can scroll down and there's a bunch of templates there, but we're gonna choose 4K255 right here. So it's a PNG, it's downloading. All right, so I downloaded that from the website and I'm gonna drag 4K255 in. Then I'm gonna make it for the length of my video. So you can see now that those black bars are there. Except it's gonna actually automatically try to add a Ken Burns cropping effect to it. So we wanna click off of Ken Burns and click crop to fill or fit. Either of those will work. So now we can see our whole clip with the letterboxing.
All right, we can't finish this course without talking about how to get good looking fonts and text in your music video. Because here's the deal. Sometimes I see music videos or lyric videos that are made in iMovie and they use one of the classic stock fonts that iMovie gives you. And to me, it's just a dead giveaway that it was done on iMovie and it just looks kind of cheap. So here's what you can do. You can go to defont.com and you can find millions of awesome looking fonts. And then you just click and download the font that you're after. Then when you make a text box in iMovie, that's so hard to say text box, this font will show up as an option for you to use. If you have one that's specific to your artist or band name, then go with that. Or you can get a unique text for every video that you do if you feel like it matches the feel of that video. So this isn't that hard. It doesn't take long to do. And please do yourself a favor. Don't use the cheesy stock fonts in iMovie. I want to show some of the, like the, the sparkly text where it like comes across and zings off. So here in iMovie, we have our clip after we've trimmed it down to the portion we want, and I'm gonna show you how to color grade it. And I wanna show you how to make it look better by making three simple adjustments. So if I click here on the clip, then I go up here to the top right, I can click on this color palette looking tool. And this area right here is going to affect our exposure and contrast. This is going to affect our saturation. And this is going to affect the white balance, which means it's either going to be warmer or cooler. All right, so the first thing we're going to address is exposure. Here, you can control your darkest areas of the image. You can also control the highlights of your image. And then here in between, you can control the midtones of your image. So for this image, here's what I might do. I might pull back the highlights a little bit. I might bring up the midtones just a little bit. And then I might darken the darkest areas just to bring back in some of that contrast. Okay, so secondly, moving on to saturation, we have this knob, which either makes your image more saturated or desaturated. Saturation basically is referring to how intense the coloration is. So here on the right, it's more saturated, and here on the left, it's more muted. So for this clip, I'm actually going to increase the saturation just a little bit. All right, so our third knob over here brings us to white balance. So a warmer image has yellow and orange tones. A cooler image is more on the blue spectrum like this. So it really depends on what you're going for, but for this one, I might make it just slightly warmer. So there we have it. Here's our image after the adjustments. And a bonus tip is how to make your image black and white. A simple way to do it is simply to bring your saturation all the way down like this. Then once you've done that, you can adjust the exposure and contrast to make your image either have a more matted and faded look or a more sharp, vivid, contrasted look. So for example, if I want it to be more contrasted, I would pull down the black, the darkest black images, and I would boost up the highlights like this. So there's one version. Or I could make it more matted, looking more faded, kind of bringing up some of those lowest parts. Something like that. So there you have it. A simple way to make your footage black and white. Okay. <laughs> cool. Is it, is it rolling right now? Yeah. Get the this is cool. Just, hey, stand right in the middle. Oh, this is sick. All right, throw the deuces. Woo! You want to be on our video? <laughs> You're in it. Do we, have your, do we have your rights? <laughs> what's your name? Andrew, what's up guys? What's up? Nice little gimbal, dude. Thank you, sir. Look off in the sunset, mommy. That's what Alright, so we're back in the studio, coming in from Dean's house, but we got some bad news. So, we broke a lamp. My wife loves interior design, so she gets these really unique, cool-looking lamps. And so, I just want to ask, who's going to tell Andrea? <laughs> um, probably Dean. Alright, watching footage the lamp breaking incident. Oh, I'm getting nervous. Here it goes. <laughs> oh! Dude, I was only turning around for like two seconds. Like a That's all it second takes. and a half. Woo! Going pro. 
if you're making a course, you've got to have like your one-stop shop yeah. for lunch. This. Yeah. Spicy chicken sandwich meal, please. This is the key right here. This is the key. Yeah, yeah. Successful day. Yeah, yeah. Successful trip. Oh. Give me a swig. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's good stuff. All right, we're rolling out. It was a <laughs> tough time, but I think we got some shots that'll be worth it. We took at least 9,000 shots, so surely there's at least five to 10 decent ones in there. So it's gonna be awesome.